Jakari Jackson, I'm going to talk to you here today about the PC culture and how it's pretty much engulfed life here in the United States of America. And one person coming out against this is Clint Eastwood. And it seems like it's these uh, old Hollywood type of guys who come out and just say common sense, whether it was previously guys like Kurt Russell talking about guns here in America or now Clint talking about the PC generation and he actually used some language, I may have to bleep here. We're really living in a pretty generation. Everybody's walking on eggshells. We see people accusing people of being racist and all kinds of stuff. Now, this is in response to an Esquire interview that Clint did, and they were asking him questions about Donald Trump. Hey, what do you think about Donald Trump? And a lot of people came out after this interview was published, and they attacked Clint. They're saying, oh, you're siding with the racist. You're agreeing with everything he said. So he's saying, I'm not supporting what the guy says. He says in the interview, he has said a lot of dumb things, but so have all of them. He realizes that all these guys say stupid things, including Hillary, who said that she likes to hang out with black people and eat hot sauce. Now, is that notable? Yeah, did I go home and cry about it? No. Now, with that introduction out the way, let's talk about the political spectrum of this, because we see people over and over, time and time again, they talk about somebody like Trump. They say he's a Nazi, they say he's Hitler. I've gone out to rallies and seen people have political cartoons of uh, Trump being fornicated by a donkey. And that's all well and good and fun and games if you're a leftist, but if you dare criticize Hillary in any fashion, then you're just a bigot. You just don't want to see a woman in the White House. And this next article is definitely going to trigger <laughs> some of those liberals. Democrats slam mean parade float depicting Hillary Clinton in prison. Of course, taking the Hillary for prison meme all the way, and uh, as you can see right there, it's uh, uh, quite the, uh, the spectacle, and they had little kids throw water balloons at it. And as I was saying, you can criticize other people, but if you dare criticize Hillary, even on legitimate things like Benghazi or other things, you talk about the uh, sexual allegations of her husband, you're just a bigot. You don't want to see any of that. And that's the political double standard of this whole uh, PC culture, we can talk about one, but you can't talk about the other, and that's really what's this, uh, diminishing the uh, quality of life, or one of the things diminishing the quality of life here in the United States of America. And as uh, I round this out, uh, one of the big things that people don't like right now is firearms in the country. And of course, you can see arguments for and against uh, various things. Of course, you don't like to see the uh, bad mass shootings happening, but you also don't hear the stories too often of some little kid who's home alone shooting the bad intruder. That usually does not make national news. And recently, we had the situation at the RNC and the DNC, and it was big hype up by the media. They're saying, oh, they're going to be armed uh, open carriers out there. It's going to be uh, Black Lives Matter or the Black Panthers, excuse me. I think they said we're going to be out there carrying their, their arms in an open way. And they said it's going to be a big deal and you know, people can get shot and there's going to be tons of arrest over it. Well, we have this article here, Cleveland PD, zero arrest for open carry at the RNC. Now, while the Cleveland Police Department had to deal with a great many things and they did arrest 23 people, none of those or for open carry or firearms related offenses. So it's just uh, the big scare tactic. As much as they want to say the right use scare tactics to hype people up and get them to react a certain way, the left was hyping people up with these open carriers. We saw it even on the late night talk shows on, the, on those liberal networks. Oh, people out here open carry. And you're like, yeah, nobody got shot. Just like when they do the open carry here in Texas. I've been to a conservative 10 open carry margin. That's very conservative. Uh, nobody's ever been shot that I'm aware of. And that's just the things that we continue to see as they continue to hype up this fear and nothingness. You can find more reports on Infowars.com. What on earth could be the reason behind Hillary Clinton's bizarre behavior in recent weeks? Weird seizures, psychotic facial tics, over-exaggerated reactions, coughing fits, strange lesions on her tongue. Is Hillary on the verge of a mental breakdown due to stress, or are her strange outbursts linked to a medical condition? Is Clinton suffering from actual brain damage, or are these odd manifestations just an expression of some kind of narcissistic personality disorder. I talked privately with psychologists and psychiatrists to try and answer this question, and here's what they told me. We know Hillary fainted and hit her head back in 2012, leading to a blood clot in her brain. In almost half of sufferers, this leads to side effects and neurological issues. According to neurologist Dr. Daniel Casice, Hillary has post-concussion syndrome and cannot tolerate stress-inducing environments. Experts told me that this footage 
likely shows Hillary having a mild Jacksonian type of seizure caused by a side effect of the blood clot. Notice how shocked the reporter is by her behavior and how Hillary tries to turn it into a joke but then continues having the seizure. Notice how it was triggered by several different people talking to her at once, which is a known cause of seizures. Is this why Hillary refuses to give press conferences? We see similar traits in this footage, the crazy eye movements, the overreaction to external stimuli, the weird elongated bathroom break in the middle of a televised debate, which insiders said was a flare up of problems from her brain injury. And do we believe Secretary Clinton will be coming around the corner any minute? Reports that she can barely stand up after giving a speech. The coughing fits, which is yet another side effect of strokes. <coughs> Difficulty swallowing, choking, a garbled voice. Again, all side effects of strokes. Guess what else is a side effect of strokes? Spontaneous outbursts of laughter that go on for longer than is socially comfortable. I know Bernie Sanders said that, um, quote, the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. <laughs> but there are a lot of people who are not. Well. <laughs> uh, include, including FBI officials. Some aspects of Hillary's freakish behavior could be explained by the blood clot, but others could be a manifestation of her notoriously unstable personality and even drug abuse. Her sudden, profound, and disproportionate bouts of rage, confirmed by former Secret Service agents, former K-9 handlers, and her own campaign insiders. An anonymous campaign aide told the New York Post that Hillary unleashed, quote, screaming childlike tantrums that have left staff members in tears and unable to work. Byrne paints a disturbing picture of what he claims Hillary is like behind the scenes. When something goes wrong, she seems to go right off the scale. Instead of trying to fix what the problem is, she, uh, she goes right to anger and, and berates who she holds responsible for. Byrne told me that as First Lady, Hillary actually hit a Secret Riley, Service agent in the Bill back of the head Biden with a Bible. She became angry about something. She had a Bible in her hand. She didn't actually throw it at him. As he described it to me, she leaned forward and kind of punched him in the head him in the head with it. He says the Clinton White House was like a battlefield and the president showed up one morning with a black eye to prove it. They even said they had to give her quote chill pills to calm her down. These outbursts are likely linked to years of persistent drug abuse. Her susceptibility to rage whenever she's challenged would also explain the complete dearth of press conferences and why her campaign builds human walls to keep reporters away. Hillary is also likely on the autism spectrum. She has virtually no empathy for other people. One expert told me that Hillary has high functioning autism with attendant sociopathy. We came, we saw, we died. <laughs> this would explain the exaggerated expressions. They're to compensate for what psychiatrists call emotional illiteracy. Could this be why her efforts to connect with people seem so forced, so insincere? I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. There's even speculation that she could have contracted syphilis from sex addict Bill Clinton, which may explain the apparent lesion on her tongue. Then you have the memory lapses. Huma Aberdeen saying Hillary is, quote, often confused the pathological lies about being under Bosnian sniper fire, the lies about her email scandal. All signs of cognitive impairment, personality disorder, or both. <coughs> All this, while the Clinton campaign claims her only issues are allergies and hyperthyroidism. Hillary could be mentally incapacitated and incapable of handling stress even before she takes on the most stressful job in the world. Barack Obama claims Donald Trump is unfit to be president because of his rhetoric. But is Hillary Clinton physically unfit to be president?